Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. So much I'm plugged in. Yes. <laughs> um, this is episode number 821. And today, we're going to talk, talk, today I'm going to talk about breaking up. The dreaded thing we don't talk about when we talk about getting you together in a relationship. We being relationship coaches. So the topic today is, um, do you love yourself enough to walk away? A better way to break up or a healthier way, excuse me, to break up. And I'm going to explain that and give you some keys because there's so much about breakups that we don't do very well and we can do better. And I'll tell you why this is going on in my mind right now as well. But before I do all that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I'm doing this. My name is Barry Selby. Um, I am, and my name's around it somewhere, so you see it around the broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, a relationship and love expert, and a, um, well, I'm also a best selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, for men and women to help you have better relationships and also be better single as well. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine because, and that's what inspires me to help women create balance in love, life, and business, why I support women in my coaching because. I'm a big fan. <laughs> and also that's what inspired my talk starting over two and a half years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And so that's why today we're episode number 821. And again, the topic today is, do you love yourself enough to walk away? A healthier way to break up. And it's not the only one I'm going to talk about. I'll give you a few keys because if you've been through this experience of breaking up, most of us have. <laughs> I have, <laughs> more than once. So I have certainly got some context to explain a healthier way and also some unhealthy ways because I've done a few unhealthy ways myself, just to be transparent. So um, the reason why I'm talking about this topic now, actually, I was uh, privileged to be on a, an, um, a, a Facebook Live dual broadcast today earlier. It was in a private group, so I can't share it here. I think I can put it on YouTube. I'm going to find out. But basically, the topic was about how men deal with breakup. And we went all over the place because of my background and skill. Instead of being a 20-minute talk, it went like an hour, and a, hour, hour and a half, something like that. It was way longer. But I didn't get to speak about certain keys, which I want to do here, so that way people who are watching there might be able to watch this broadcast. But if you missed out on that broadcast, don't worry, there's content here for you as well. And this will hopefully assist you if you're either about to go through a breakup, sorry to hope, um, rub that in, or just to prepare you in case that happens in the future. Not that you want to hold that vision. So let me put something in front of that first, speaking of vision. Like many of the people in my business, of relationship coaching, dating, matchmaking, et cetera, et cetera, most of the focus we have is on the front end. I should say most of the, most of the focus they have, I'm gonna delineate myself for a moment here. Most of the focus they have is on the front end, meaning getting into a relationship. Once they get you in, they're done. And especially the matchmakers, that's their focus because that's what they're here for, is to help you find someone who matches you and put you together and go, great, everyone's happy. And then you sail off into the sunset and everybody's great, they get paid and things good or sometimes the, the other order. Most dating coaches have the same focus. They're about getting out on dates so you can find someone to be happy and that's the way it works out and then they walk away. I stand apart from that field partly because a lot of my focus around my clients is helping them heal the past relationship first. Because as I was talking about on the broadcast this morning, the way that um, Barbara, Barbara Angelis said that they uh, termed this or explained this recently when I heard a lecture talking about how when you go through breakups and you don't heal yourself after the breakup, which I'll get to as well, you end up basically, well, let me put, no, sorry, back up, I need to create, this is an analogy, let me be clear. So imagine that your love ability, your ability to love is like waves on an ocean. It's a fluid, flowing, expressive energy that is not endless, but it's definitely got a range to it. When you go through a breakup, you don't heal the wounds, or you go through suppressed emotions because something happened in a relationship, or some other thing that put you in a discord, a discordant place and you didn't express your upset. It's basically freezing inside. Don't mean cold, I mean locking up. And I, talk about, I talked about it actually last week as about um, how time doesn't heal all wounds. Time, time, when it comes to emotional wounds, time numbs all wounds. So what Barbara Angelis said, which is an, a, a parallel expression, is that if you go through breakups, upsets, and you don't heal the wounds and you end up with these traumas inside, like icebergs on that ocean, that fluid energy you have, which is your ability to love, is slowly getting taken over by icebergs. Hi, Catherine, nice to see you again. Thank you for being on my broadcast. And what happens is, slowly but surely, your, your ocean becomes covered with ice. That covering is the, ability, is the inability for you to express yourself. 
So the more upset, discord that isn't healed, resolved, it doesn't matter how many relationships you get into. In fact, the more you get into and they get out of, the more challenging it becomes. You end up with a much more, sorry, much less freedom to express love, express joy, and feel it either because you've been numbed out by this sheet of ice across your ocean of expression, so to speak. So the way I talked about it last week in one of my broadcasts, which I recommend you watch if you haven't seen it, is about how time doesn't heal all wounds, time numbs all wounds. Because again, if you go through breakups and you don't deal with the wounding, upset, hurt feelings, et cetera, et cetera, from that breakup, you just stuff it down and go on a new date and keep going more and more dates. What you do is you start numbing yourself out. But what's happening is you're numbing your heart, which means less and less of your heart is available to love. Different analogy, same result. So yes, thank you. I'm glad the metaphor worked for you, Catherine. I appreciate that. Um, so breaking up is not a fun topic. But as I said, I stand apart from a lot of relationship, relationship coaches because my focus a lot of times with my clients is helping them find their way back to wholeness again, to become really self-sufficient and to heal those wounds that they, um, what's the word for? Not, not experienced, um, endured perhaps in a past relationship. So I'll talk about that in a moment. I want to back up to the in-relationship experience of wanting to break up and what might be around that. Because this is the piece I didn't talk about this morning when I was on that dual broadcast. First of all, this is a lesson for relationships, period, for everybody. When there's an emotional discord, an upset, or a, a feeling of difference that doesn't line up with you and your partner, the one thing that you probably may not do, but I recommend highly you do this, is speak from yourself. And it's going to sound really silly, but it's a fundamental part Meaning that when you're having an upset with your partner, when you start saying, you know, you keep doing this, you just, this is not working, you're making my life suck, you know, all this type of blaming judgment stuff, which is all that codependent paradigm, by the way. Rather than doing that, when you say to your partner, you know, when you do this, I get upset. Or, um, you know, every time I'm expecting something to happen, but it's not happening, I feel discordant. You take ownership of your own feelings and your own hurt feelings. Not to say what they did is wrong, but so they see that what you are experiencing makes them, maybe you make them feel bad. And it's not to, it's not, let me say that again, sorry. You're not meant to be trying to make them feel bad, by the way. You're actually being honest with what you're feeling. Because the thing is, when you start reacting to somebody and saying, well, you did this and you did this, what's really happening is you're upset inside and you're just throwing it on top of them. That's a projection. And it's also what I call codependent, a part of the codependent paradigm, which is something I'm very adamant about stamping out. <laughs> So when you remember to take ownership in those discordant situations, first of all, you're not going to be laying a bunch of guilt and judgment stuff on your partner. Secondly, you may be in a better place to resolve it so you don't break up. Because the thing about it is sometimes these breakups happen for, um, I want to say, less than really, I want to say the right reasons, but for less reasons than maybe worthwhile separating for. You may, quit too, you may quit too easily, put it that way. Because maybe you don't deal with the emotional stuff that happens. Because, I, I mean, <laughs> okay, self-exposure time <laughs> or self-revealing time. And I've shared this before in my broadcast about my very early dating life. I shared that in my early, because this speaks to this, is this thing about not wanting to deal with the emotional stuff. Because I was a poster child for avoiding the emotional stuff. In my, early in my late teens, early 20s, my very young, immature dating experiences, not that I'm using that as an excuse, um, I said that pretty much every single girl I went out with, our connection, our relationship, our dating experience would last at most three months. It might last a month, it might last a couple of weeks, it would last three months. But it was, a, it was the same thing that ended every time that I remember. Again, this is, this is memory, so it might be quite slightly inaccurate, but wait, this is the experience. Is Every time it would end because of an argument. There'd be an upset, a discord, a separation, an argument, something where I didn't feel the loving was there anymore. And I had a black and white rule in myself that it was loving or there was upset. Because, and I talked about this before, and this is, this is a secondary topic, I'm not gonna talk about it here, I've talked about it many times before. Our dating experience is largely predicated upon the way we were raised by our parents. And what so, I look back at my experience with my family growing up is that I don't remember my parents arguing in front of me and my brother. And that's memory, not necessarily fact, but that's memory. And that's what counts, what I remember inside. So I have memories stored of my parents always being loving to varying degrees, but never arguing. So I didn't have a reference point that arguments could happen in relationships. 
Now that's a whole other topic about how you start living in your adult life as a, a, you, with your childhood patterns running subconsciously and making a mess of your relationships. If you want to find out more about that, reach out to me. I'll tell you, you've got a bunch of stuff about how that works and, you can, and every one of us does it, by the way. That's a human experience. So I didn't have tools, skills, understanding that arguments are just part of the journey. It was a black and white thing. It's like, if we're arguing this, there's no love, so I'm leaving. That was kind of how I did it. So most people do that to a degree. Well, let me, sorry, let me explain it. I realize there's another piece of that. <laughs> yes, there's a piece of that. <laughs> well, no, exactly, exactly, Catherine. We don't have to explain others to express how we feel. So let me just say this piece. As I mentioned, my upbringing taught me that arguments and love didn't go together. Some people's upbringings taught them that yelling and screaming was part of a relationship. So unless there was that, they didn't know they're being loved. So it goes extremely the other way. So what I'm speaking to here to get back to the breaking up experience and owning your own feelings is understanding what it is that drives your either aversion to or immersion in emotional expression in a relationship. If you're always finding yourself getting into arguments with your partner, you may want to consider that maybe you were raised that way, that arguing was part of the makeup in your family. And we can change that. I can help you with that. Or the other way, which is my experience, was that there was never any of that. And so it was always polite, nice, and okay. There was a lack of passion, to be honest. <laughs> but it was missing. It was part of the journey I went through. So as adults, as mature, conscious adults, having the ability to own our feelings when there's upset, discord, aversion, even if it's what we think is normal, again, depending on what you're upbringing, taking ownership is the first step towards having a healthy relationship with yourself and other people. So this would actually make it so your relationship could be get better. It may not actually mean you've got to leave or quit, but it'll make it better so you can actually have more honest communication. Now you may discover in the communication, communication and conversation with your partner that's still not going to work. But if you have the ability to communicate and take ownership of your participation and your partner hopefully does the same thing, that's another thing that ideally, ideally you have is a match on that, then you can see if the relationship is worth saving, because it might be. But if it's not, then knowing it's time to walk away, being willing to love yourself enough to take a walk, to walk away, this is the second part by the way, is the key. Because for a lot of people, that I know of, they've they've um, main, well, maintained not the right word. They've prolonged the agony, so to speak. They've stayed in the relationship way past the point where being in a, where where being there was a wise choice. Now, you may not resonate for you, but somebody you know, I know I did that myself. Um, one of my last relationships before I started doing this work full on was definitely dragged past the point of healthy choice. Now. I was the nice guy at the time, being polite in quotes, trying to trying to put. In, I was in a position where my I would force my girlfriend to dump to dump me. I talked about that this morning. That wasn't healthy either. But the thing was, is that I, what I didn't do, which I'm recommending you do, because I've learned this since, is when you realise that relationship is not going to work, and it's really clear it's not going to work, is willing to be honest and to speak to that, and be willing to walk away from a place of healthy, not disappearing, not ghosting. Please, I'm not affirming. I'm not affirming ghosting or running away or panicking and sort of stuff. I'm talking about basically having an honest communication with your partner to let them know what's really going on. Now, you, if you're in a partnership where it's out of balance, where you're maybe in the, an interdependent model and, the, and they're in a codependent model, they may be desperate to keep you and they're gonna fight for you and they're gonna be very impassioned without really understanding what the problem is or the difference is or the reason for the breakup is. Because I'm very clear, not all relationships will work. Just to be, just be transparent about that. I'm passionate about my clients finding the right relationship and the healthy relationship but I'm not going to enforce relationships working out. I actually worked with a couple a few years ago now where I, they got married and I didn't recommend it because it didn't feel like the energy was done. They weren't they hadn't healed enough yet. And frankly, it didn't last that long. They actually divorced within about two, less than two years because of what I saw was happening before that. So choosing wisely, yes. But knowing if it doesn't work out, are you willing to love yourself enough to walk away? And I say it that way because sometimes we choose to stay beyond what is healthy. We're not loving ourselves to say, you know what, I need to say no. So loving yourself is a key to having respect for yourself and having self-trust. You can actually be in a place where you can talk to your ex-partner or soon to be ex-partner, be clean, take ownership and leave in dignity. It's an unusual, not, an unusual, not a usual thing for many people I know. So I want to drop that seed in there too. Breakups can be healthy, as weird as that sounds. For most people, 
and most experiences because the way society teaches us with TV shows and movies and love songs or broken love songs it's always the grieving and heartrending and upset and, and, and pain of the wound of leaving and it's always like you know I never want to see you again you've been ruining my life and that sort of stuff not necessarily but must something drops in the middle of that I just realized that when I said it is that part of the breakup process though is grieving I was talking about this morning and that was the thing I did say in there to drop it in because we do when we go through a breakup especially if we were broken up with by somebody else we go through all of the steps of grief we go through anger resentment guilt judgment sadness um, and more there's more than five I believe in frankly in guilt in, in grieving there's more than five components but we'll go through the process and if we don't again like saying in the, in the in the emotional breakup you don't deal with that grieving process thank you Catherine I appreciate it. I'm glad you appreciate my honesty I, I, I've shared this my experience before because it's a teaching point um, yes I use my life as a teaching model <laughs> but it's true it does help so the piece I wanted to speak to in the griefing piece is that for many people when they get out of a relationship, when they've gone through a breakup and they've been dumped and, or broken up with or whatever it is, you've been on the receiving end of the dumping, the focus can be to like go back to go dating again and to get over, get over it and move on. As I said at the beginning, like the analogy that, that um, Barbara Angela said about the icebergs on the ocean, or as I talked about it, where, you, where the, you, the wounds are numbed, not healed, just to go out on dates again, to get out and try and you know, sort of get back on the bike again, sort of thing, or get back on the horse to ride again, as that very bad metaphor, to get out and date again, is something that it's, I understand the desire, but if you don't deal, face, re, 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 um, deal with, face, resolve, heal, take time with those wounds from the past relationship, which are usually grief centric, then they go numb over time. This is the power of this is the power and the weakness of time is it doesn't heal your wounds emotionally it may heal physical wounds but time numbs the wounds i did a whole talk about that again last week the recognition is that when you go through a bad breakup there's going to be some wounding there's going to be some pain there's going to be some suffering even if your partner was as i mentioned earlier able to take ownership and be respectful if one person was ready for the breakup and the other person wasn't it's going to hurt and the person even doing the breaking up might feel hurt too but they're choosing for the higher good, which is they need to honor themselves and love themselves, say, you know, I need to walk away. And yes, they will be hurt. They may be carrying the wounding too. So I'm not saying which one is the one they should do it. Both partners should, I recommend, to spend time dealing with their emotional wounding they're carrying from the past relationship. And for some of you, it's the past relationships, plural, for the last 20, 30 years. Taking the time, hi, Susan, and you're very welcome. I haven't seen you for a while, and I've seen my broadcast. Taking the time to really deal with, to face, to heal your wounds from past relationships. That's a lot of work to do with my clients because they come to me looking for the next relationship, but all this stuff is in the way because we're human. Most of us don't have practice, tools, skills, um, recognition that we should heal those wounds from the past relationship. Wounds can heal, but wounds, but emotional wounds generally won't heal without dealing with the treatment of the wounds. It's like wounds that are wounds are they're emotional just get buried and get numb. They don't get healed, so don't forget it. Exactly, Catherine. So I'm just making sure that we were on the same same point there. So um, there was a point in there that went out of my head. It'll come back in a second. <laughs> As, yeah, I mentioned. So I'm working with my clients. Just so in case you're in this boat, you might fit in this place is carrying the wounds from the past relationships make it hard to go for the next one without dealing with those past griefs. So just to be honest, when you work with, if you work with me and you haven't dealt with your past relationship baggage, wounding, hurts, etc., etc., that's going to be high on our agenda. So if you're scared of that, you shouldn't work with me. <laughs> but if you want to resolve it so you can move forward, then we should talk. Speaking of which, I will put some links in the comments so you can reach out and get some support. I have a link to chat with me because I do offer a complimentary conversation with me as a gift. Um, I did mention my books. So that's going to be in the comments too. And I'm going to put in the comments my self-love practice because it's something I keep remembering to talk about with my clients. It's a practice when you start loving yourself, it will help you heal those wounds. It will also bring you back to having the integrity to love yourself enough to make better choices. So the side effects of the self-love practice, which I'm going to put a link in the comments, will be that your life will improve and your treatment of yourself will improve and all your relationships will transform over time as well. It's a pretty, pretty tall order, but it works. So now we're talking. <laughs> exactly, Catherine. So, Self-love practice, I recommend you get started with that. Um, it's, it's two audio meditations, an AM and PM, 
plus a guidebook, a pretty meaty piece of reading that will get you started. And then uh, my book and discover session with me. That's the three links I'll put in there. If you want to reach out to me otherwise through social media, you can do that. If you want help, don't sit on the fence, take action. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Thanks for joining me here. If you want to watch my replays, they go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, which are fairly easy to find. You can like my page as well, please. On my, I also put on my YouTube because it's easier to find them because the listing is much easier on YouTube. And on YouTube, is my, my channel is Barry Selby, or my social media is my name. Um, although Instagram is still kicked out, so I can't get back on Instagram right now. It's a whole other story. Um, but on YouTube, if you go to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, you can, you can subscribe to my channel, please. And on there is a playlist called Messages for the Masculine, where all of these talks are listed from the newest to the oldest, and they'll all be in there. So you can scroll through looking for titles, keywords, searching, etc., etc., and get what you want. I do recommend if you haven't seen the broadcast from last week, it was about a week ago, which was about um, time doesn't heal all wounds, it, it numbs them. That was a deep talk. would help you get some clarity in case this didn't cover it enough. And again, the links will be in the comments for you to get some support, reach out, get help. I invite you to do that. I recommend it. It will change your life. And I'm here to support you. So with that, I thank you for watching. Thanks for all the interaction and the love. I appreciate that a lot. It's always nice to see people interacting, so I'm not talking to just the screen. <laughs> and with that, I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, same channel, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here. And uh, as always, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.